In the meantime, Donald Trump is being uh, pushed to focus more on things like Obamacare, the story we just heard, and the economy. Rudy Giuliani is saying that, uh, that this morning on FBN. Take a listen. The more he stays on the fundamentals, the more he wins. Because if we, if we ran this as a computer election just based on fundamentals, he wins. Donald Trump can bring jobs. Donald Trump can renegotiate treaties. Donald Trump can put coal miners back to work, steel workers back to work. Donald Trump, you know, can stand up to Putin. All right, let's bring in Carl Rove. Uh, Carl, it sounds like uh, the kind of advice you would give a presidential candidate. Absolutely. I mean, think about the last couple of weeks, uh, the missed opportunities by Trump on the economy and national security on you know, the day after the Democratic Convention, he was involved in an argument with the Gold Star families. That was the Friday that they issued the GDP report on second quarter, 1.2 percent GDP. He could have played off of that for a couple of days, the lousy uh, Obama recovery and uh, Clinton's uh, unwillingness to do anything different. Uh, Sunday, Fox News, Chris Wallace interview. Uh, she defended expanding the government, raising taxes, uh, spending more money. Uh, he could have had a lot of fun with that, particularly since she also endorsed an idea on Sunday morning that I thought was right up Trump's alley. She said, let's set an, up an infrastructure bank. We'll seed it with taxpayer dollars, and then we'll get private investors involved. Well, that's, you know, that's ca crony capitalism. We saw how that worked out for the taxpayers in Solyndra, and he could have had fun with that all day long. And instead, he spent Sunday in Colorado Springs and right. Columbus, Ohio, attacking the fire marshals for not let, letting enough people into the, into the auditoriums. You know, so, Carl, uh, there's some scuttlebutt about an intervention. A lot of the names... Uh, that were mentioned have sort of rejected that idea, but it's not, it's not unreasonable to think that uh, everyone will huddle together over the weekend at Trump Tower, and if so, what do you think those closest to him are going to say? Well, I don't know what they're going to say, but I do know this. First of all, and I put this in my column in the Wall Street Journal this morning, first of all, there needs to be a disciplined plan about what this campaign wants to talk about and when they need to talk about it. Somebody needs to have a plan. Now, they'll need to adjust it because events will intrude, but having a framework that says, here's what we want to be talking about and when we want to be talking about it is the first essential. Second of all, nobody in this campaign is sitting there watching what Hillary Clinton is doing and, and, and rapidly figuring out how Donald Trump could seize those opportunities. I was sitting in the green room on Sunday morning at Fox News Sunday, waiting to go on the panel, watching Chris Wallace's interview, and there she is talking about uh, lying about her uh, her email records, making misstatements about Benghazi, opening up all kinds of, uh, of opportunities for him on the Second Amendment, and then making these statements on the economy. And I'm reading the Twitter feed, and it is Donald Trump saying, I was viciously attacked by the Khan family. Uh, can't I defend myself? So somebody needs to be monitoring these things so that they jump on him. And finally, somebody needs to get a hold of that Twitter feed of his. He, somebody needs to say to him, Donald, really think yeah. about it. Does this advance our cause before you tweet out that next message? You know, I did see, I guess, over the last week or so, it felt like there was a rapid response team on, on social media uh, responding to events in the news, you know, sort of bang, bang, statements after statement. And it felt professional, felt uh, urgent, and, and it felt, and it felt timely. Well, and look, that, the biggest part of this is the candidate, and he is not responding that way. Think about it. I mean, again, Friday, what did we see? Not jumping on the GDP report. What did we see? And he could have made a couple of days of that. Sunday, she makes misstatements on the economy on, on her email server. He could have done something with that. So, I mean, we've had two weeks in which he's been basically off talking about something entirely different than the economy and security, which are the two driving issues sure. in, this ra sure. in this race, nor has he been talking about change, which is the underlying dynamic that favors him in this election. Yeah, uh, 70 to 80 percent people want change depending on the polls. Carl, thank you very much.